All right, it's one o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. All right. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Everything's good here. All right. So uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, how many people saw the homework that I posted um, already? Okay. So if you load up our course syllabus, I just want to go through this real quickly. Um, here we are today, 10 one. Uh, your next homework is not due until um, the 15th. Okay, so not next Thursday, but the Thursday after that. So literally two weeks. It is a long homework assignment. Okay, um, so I would get started on it sooner rather than later. Uh, today, I should be able to finish up most of probability and counting. Um, and I will put this in a um, email to you. But after class today, your homework, which is posted here. Oh, nope, sorry, here. Uh, after class today, you'll be able to do problems uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. So there's like just like two problems you won't be able to do. Okay, so we're going to cover those other two problems um, basically next week. Um, and so next week we'll do something called discrete random variables, then the binomial distribution. And then because probabilities, I think it can be a, a pretty confusing topic, especially some of the harder problems. Um, I have an entire review day built in on the 13th. So what we'll do on the 13th is I'll just give us like um, a practice exam and then we'll just all take it together and work through it. Does that sound okay? All right, does anybody have any questions about any of that before I get started? All right, so the format of the exam will be exactly like the last one. It'll be an online exam. You'll load it up, you'll have the two hours to take it. Uh, there'll be a mix between like you have to put in the answers and multiple choice, things like that. Um, yeah, so it'll be the same type of format. All right, so last class, last class. Um, does anybody remember the last problem we did last class? I personally thought it was a cool, not a cool problem, that's the wrong word for it, but an interesting problem. I think we did something about space shuttle safety. Does that, does that ring a bell? We computed the, yeah, we computed the probability that um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the Space Shuttle Challenger before it um, lifted off would um, uh, be a loss. We saw that that was 7%. And what we did was we used like all these, um, all these different rules, all right, to help us get there. So last week we, we focused on the um, general addition rule and the general multiplication rule for independent events, okay? And we did a bunch of examples with that. So today's lecture, uh, we're going to finish up probability. All right, so we're going to start, um, and just a little bit of a note, I actually probably won't get the recording of this lecture posted until tomorrow. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, it's on my YouTube channel, so I get to see the number of views. So it's not like it's, it, these are heavily viewed videos, but um, I won't get to posting it until tomorrow. I just have to run after, right out after class today. Okay. So picking up right where we left off, uh, the next rule I want to talk about is called conditional probability, okay? And the idea behind conditional probability is you want to compute a probability when you're given, oh, my handwriting is particularly terrible today, I'm sorry. When you're given an extra piece of information or told to make an assumption.
So we're going to work this initial example here. Okay, so suppose you roll a six-sided die. Okay, so just imagine in your head, you're going to take a six-sided die and you're going to roll it. And then as soon as, as soon as it hits the ground, I cover it up, okay? So you don't get to see your result, okay? So what is the probability Oh, thank you. <laughs> you rolled a three. Okay. I appreciate the love of the sound effect. Okay. Can anyone tell me in the chat there what, you know, if you roll a six sided die, okay, what's the probability that the roll comes up a three? Yes. Thank you, Dora. Yeah, there's only one way that can happen. Okay. And there's six possible outcomes, right? Just so we're clear, like the sample space of a six sided die is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So now, suppose Matt, that's me, covers up your result. Okay, so you know, I cover up your result, you don't see it. And, and, and I take a peek at the result, okay? I say, hey, guess what? You just rolled an odd number. Tells you that you rolled an odd number. Okay? So now, yeah, yep, um, thank you, you're, you're working ahead. I, I appreciate that, Torah. So what's the probability you rolled a three? Listen to how I say this, given you rolled odd. Well, how many odd numbers are there on a six-sided die? Yeah, there's a one, there's a three, and there's a five. So there's only three possible ways you could have rolled an odd number, okay? Well, now the probability you rolled a three, if you know it's an odd number, well, what did Torah say it was there? Yeah. yeah. So the probability that you rolled a three, given that you rolled an odd number, is just one out of three. Does that, does that make sense? Like, I'm asking you to compute a probability when I give you an extra piece of information? I can't tell. Okay, I got a couple, couple yeses. Okay, got one yes. Okay, so now there's there's an actual formula for this. Okay, so I want to give you that formula now. Okay, is it, is everybody okay if I move on from this slide here? Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait for you. Sorry, there's some like special sound effects today. You guys can hear on my video. Um, you know, I don't, I don't generally do this, but I'll, I'll, I actually, you know, I'm a little bit put together today. So, so maybe so today seems less impersonal. Uh, can you guys see my video today? Yes. Yeah, the sound effect on that last one was I was just tossing a baseball while I was waiting. So. Baseball season came to an end, so. Am I still having tea? Uh, let's see, what am I having today? But today I'm having a uh, seltzer. Um, yes, rest in peace baseball season. And I thought it'd be okay for me to put my video chat on because it's the first time in a long time that I put on a collared shirt today for you all. So, you know, I hope, I hope you appreciate that. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm just curious, do most, uh, do most of the instructors um, do the video on or do most of them do what I do? I'm just curious. On, video. usually. Video on, okay. Okay, I guess I'm the, I'm the, I guess it, you don't have the turners on for me, that's okay. Um, uh, I, I think with, especially since we have this board up here, I find that the video might be a little distracting, but that's just me. You know, I, I will say this, I, I do hope that you're all paying attention. Um, you know, I think there's a tendency maybe if I just, you know, without the video on that people just, um, you know, put the, put the lecture on and then just kind of zone out and check Facebook or something. So, um, you know, I hope you're, I hope you get a lot out of what I do. But I'm willing to change if you want, you know. Keep doing what I'm doing. Ignore me. Just get on with the lecture, Matt. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Uh, you can keep the camera on. It's nice. We would never ask you to change. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the only reason I wouldn't, I don't necessarily want to put the lecture on is because you just see me doing this the entire time. You just see the top of my head because I, I write the lecture on this. So, so you don't want to just see me doing this. I think it'd be a little distracting, but I just wanted to turn it on and say hi today. I'm gonna give you a chance to look at my, my bookshelves in the back here. All right, anyways. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, a lot of Star Wars stuff up there, as you can see, and, and a few pictures. But anyways, let's let's get back to the lecture. All right, just hopefully humanize the class a little bit. I don't know. All right, so we were talking about this conditional conditional probability stuff. Um, so let me give you the formula for it now. All right, and the formula just goes like this. For two events, okay, and we'll call those events E and event F, okay, the probability that event F occurs given that event E occurs or has occurred. Okay, so going back here, what I mean by this, for this example here, don't worry, I'll go back. What is the probability that event F, so this will be our event F happens, given that some event E here occurred? So I'm telling you that, hey, you rolled an odd. This formula is given by So it looks a little weird. It's just written like this probability of event F and then this vertical line here means given. All right, so the probability of event F given event E occurs. It's actually just a pretty straightforward formula. It's just the probability of E and F happening divided by the probability of E. Or another way you can do this, it's the number of ways E and F can occur divided by the number of ways E can occur. Okay. So let's go back, okay, and see if this formula works that I just did here, okay, using this example here, okay. So what's the probability
you roll a three given you rolled odd. Okay. So let's probably roll a three given that you rolled odd. We know the answer is one third. Okay. So when we work our formula here, all right, the answer using this formula better be one third. Okay. That's how we'll know it worked. All right. Let's probably roll a three given your roll odd. Okay. So this is my E, or excuse me, this is my F, and this is my E. All right, so for this example, I'm gonna use this one here. So it's the probability of E and F. So it's the probability you roll odd and you roll a three divided by the probability of E, the probability you roll an odd number. Okay, don't overthink this one. So I'm just curious. Uh, can anybody tell me in the chat maybe, or if you want to turn your, your audio on, what's the probability you roll an odd number and that odd number is a three on a six-sided die? Close, all right, so we've got two different answers there. Okay, a lot of people got it, okay, yeah. So the answer here, let me show you the sample space. So if you're gonna roll a die, okay? Just so we're clear, this is the sample space. Okay, the only way you can roll an odd number and roll a three is literally that you roll a three. So the probability that it's an odd number and a three is one out of six. And now what's the probability you roll an odd number on a six-sided die? And I'll explain why it's not one twelfth because that's a common answer for this one. Okay, yeah, you get three out of six. So one thing here, like a good guess, good guess was like the answer is one twelfth because the probability roll out is one half times probability roll a third is one sixth. You see the and statement here. But the and statement implies to like uh, two different like dice rolls being done here. So since it's a single die, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to multiply there. I know that's why it gets a little tricky. Okay, so now you have a fraction divided by a fraction. So have you guys heard the saying, keep, change, flip? You keep the top, one sixth. You change the division and multiplication and you, whoop, you flip this. So, you know, you can just, you can simplify by crossing out, but I'll just do one times six is six, six times three is 18. And one uh, and six over 18 simplifies to one third. And that's exactly what we got back here. Okay, so this formula works. All right, you wanna, how about a different example, okay, of this? Um, one that, uh, one is how, let me give you an example of how I'm gonna ask this both on your homework. Uh, this is called conditional probability. All right. Got it, Torah? Oh, 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 it's called the keep change flip. Yeah, no problem, no problem.
Okay, let's let's do a um, no problem, no problem. Let's do another example, one that I think um, uh, one 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 that I think is interesting. All right, let's talk about. Um, Let's do the voyage of the Titanic. All right, let's talk about the Titanic. So last class I asked if people knew about the Space Shuttle Challenger and a lot and most of us in the class hadn't heard of it. How many people have heard of the, you know, the voyage of the Titanic before? Me. Yeah, people, yeah. We think of it like it was immortalized in a movie, right? Starring Leo and Kate. Okay, so what I have here is I have the actual um, passenger data I'm going to share with you for the Titanic. Um, and what I have it broken down is by uh, the sex of the, the passenger and if they survived or if they died on the Titanic. Okay, so let me give you passenger data. Okay, so we have if they survived the Titanic, if they died, if they were male, if they were female. And then um, what I don't have broken down next by is I just have if they were a child, okay? Not if they were a boy or a girl, okay? So let me give you, um, the, the counts of each of these, okay? The number of males who survived the Titanic is 338 males survived the Titanic. The number of females who survived the Titanic were 316. And the number of children who survived the Titanic were 57, okay? If I wanted to find the total number of people who survived the Titanic, what would I do with these numbers? Would add them. Yep, yep. So if you add these up, it turns out that 711 people survived the Titanic, okay? Is anybody surprised by that number? You know, when you think of the Titanic, you, you know, I you know, you think oh, almost everybody died, but does that seem like a lot of people survived the Titanic? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now let me give you the, the number of people who died. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit sad, I'm sorry, but 52 children on the Titanic died. 109 females on the Titanic died. And then 1,352 males on the Titanic died. Okay. So the number of total people who died, if you add up this, this row right here, 1,513 people on the Titanic died. So now let's just get counts by if they were male, female, or if they were a child. So the number of children on the Titanic were 109. The number of females on the Titanic were 425. And then the number of males on the Titanic were 1,690, okay? I'm just curious, does anybody with a calculator real quick have a guess or can tell me how many total people that were on the Titanic? Thank you, thank you, Pablo. Yep. There were 2,224 uh, total people on the Titanic, okay? So I encourage you, if you're, if you're a copy of notes, uh, copy this down. Um, we're going to need it uh, for the next couple questions that I'm going to ask you, okay? Everybody okay if I move on? Yeah. <laughs> Do we include Rose and Jack? 
Kate and Leo. Oh, that joke never gets old. Yeah, you want to hear something funny? I've actually never even seen the movie. Yeah, maybe I'll watch it. I don't know. Okay. I know, I haven't seen it. I didn't, yeah, no, no, no reason to. I, it is crazy. I don't know. Yeah, just, there's no reason. Just didn't pique my interest. I think when it came out, I was like in my early 20s or in my late teens. So, you know, just wasn't, wasn't something I, at that age I was interested in. Okay. <laughs> Not missing much, okay. So here's the problem, okay? Suppose, you select a passenger at random, okay? So you have this list here, sorry, this is really example two, okay? Suppose you have this list here of all the passengers, okay? You have this database. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna, you know, like just imagine you put everybody's name in a hat, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach into the hat and you're gonna pull one name out at random. Okay, that's what we're doing here. What is the probability couple questions here. One, what is the probability they survived the Titanic? Really should be capitalized there. What's the probability they survived the Titanic? So it's literally just the probability they survived. Okay, yeah, exactly right there. Thank you in the chat, I appreciate that. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna look, well, how many people survived the Titanic? 711, and then you're just gonna divide it by the total number of people on the Titanic, okay? It was just 711 divided by 2224. So if you grab your trusty calculator, Looks like, I'll round this to two decimal places. It looks like the probability is 0.32. So another way to say, to, to interpret this too is also that 32% of people survive. <clears throat> All right, now, second question. Sorry, a little tickle in my throat. If a child is selected, what is the probability they survived? Okay, so now here's, here's a question I have for you when you see this, okay? Um, yeah, exactly, thank you, Tora, yeah. Uh, am I telling you or giving you a piece of information here? Like, what am I telling you is selected? Yeah, okay, so you're looking at this and what you're seeing here is they're saying, if a child is selected. So what they're saying here is to assume or that you're given a child is selected. So when you have this given or an assumption here, you're just gonna use this conditional probability. Okay, so I'm actually gonna write this formula out, okay, so we can see what's going on here. What's the probability they survived given they were a child? So if you look in the chat, right, like Tora has 57 out of 109, like, so, you know, I'm just gonna write out how she got this, okay? Looking back here, I'm gonna use this one here. It's the number of ways E and F can happen. So it's the number of children 
and survived. Okay, and then you divide it by the number of ways, whatever the given is, okay? So you're gonna divide this by the number of children. So you just have to, now what you have to do is you have to just look back at the table and say, okay, how many of the children are there and they, how many of the children survived? How many number of children and survived? So that's right here where child and survived intersects, 57. And then the total number of children was 109. So it's a little bit sad, but it's 0.52. So what that means is 52% of children survived. All right, makes sense, the subtle difference here when you're given a piece of information like this? I got one yes. Yeah. Okay, that, was a, that wasn't a very enthusiastic yeah. I was young. It's, it's cool. I understand. Yeah. Math class in the afternoon. We probably all just had lunch or something. We're all tired. I get it. All right. Let me ask you just a follow up to this, okay? Two more questions. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'd rather. Although I'm teaching, I'm teaching this same class at this same time next semester. Um, but I don't know, the morning classes can be okay. So anyways, if a uh, female is selected, what is the probability she survived? And then another question here, if a male is selected, what is the probability he survived? Okay, why don't you take two seconds, a little bit more than two seconds, why don't you take a minute and see if you can do these two problems without my help. So I'll give you another, I'll give you another 30 seconds and then we'll start these together. Sorry, I know I have a very squeaky chair. All right, everybody, uh, everybody ready to see me? See me solve them? Yeah. Okay, there was another yawn, yes. Yeah. Okay, so for this first one here, uh, what am I telling you to assume is selected? Females? Females, yeah. So it's the probability somebody survived given they were female. So just using this formula, okay? It's the number of females and survived divided by the number of females. Well, how many females survived the Titanic? 
Yeah. And how many total females were there? Yeah. So if you were to take 316 divided by 425, I think you get 0 0.74. Yeah. So 74% of females survived the Titanic. Okay, this is why Kate made it. All right, now looking down here, um, I'm, this one here, I'm telling you if a male is selected. So you're given that a male is selected. So it's probably that you survived, given you were a male. What's the number of ways these two things can happen? Number of male and survived. Just divided by the number of males. Yeah, poor Jack. Yeah, how many? Uh, how many males survived the Titanic? Yep. Yeah, thank you. And how many total males were there on the Titanic? Is it one? Yep. Yeah, thank you. If you plug this in your calculator, you get roughly. Yep. Yeah. So what that means is 20% of males, the odds were not in Jack's favor. Yeah. Very like hunger game reference there. Okay. So you think you can handle um, a question like this, maybe on your homework and on the next exam? It doesn't seem too bad, honestly. Now, I'll, I'll, you'll definitely, You'll see there's a question just like this on your homework and um, um, I'm about the, No, there's no space. What are you talking about? <laughs> there's definitely space. I've seen that. At least I've seen, seen that gift. Is that someone that just got cut off? Did you have a question? I don't know if taking turns would have worked. You still would have been wet when you got on top of the raft. It would have been cold. I don't know. Anyways, we can debate. We could probably do a whole, you know, college level class on that movie, but we'll just, we'll just move on. Okay. Okay. So um, for your exam and for your homework, the way I, I will um, assess you. So ask a question on conditional probability will be, with this table type of question, okay? Don't stress too much about something like this. I won't, I won't ask something like this on an exam, okay? <clears throat> I like to um, show the um, formula here, okay? Because it, it helps us on, on the next type of question that I'm gonna show us, okay? Or next type of uh, formula, okay? So now we have um, our, last, our last formula for probability. Okay, so I hope everyone's kind of excited about that. Okay. And this is the general multiplication rule for dependent events. Okay, so this is a little bit harder. It can be, maybe, maybe it's not that bad, but it can be a little bit harder. Um, So independent events mean two events are independent if the occurrence of the first does not affect the occurrence of the second. So what do um, dependent events mean then, if anybody remembers from last class? So two events, we'll call those events E and event F are dependent events. Yeah, are dependent events. If the occurrence of the first event and that's the first event E. So what happens first, all right, does affect the occurrence of the second event F.
Okay, so what happens first will, will impact what happens second. So if you remember the example I talked about last class was um, if you draw two cards from a deck of cards, right, one after the other, and then you don't put the, card, the first card back, all right, how it would affect the probability you would get a queen and then you would get another queen. So the general multiplication rule when you're dealing with independent events, okay, is just the following. For two dependent events, events E and events F, okay, the probability that event E and event F occur is given by the following. Okay, so if I say, hey, what's the probability that event E and event F happens? Okay. Um, so when you see the and statement, okay, obviously just by the formula here, when you see the and statement, what does that generally imply that you need to do? Yep, yep, you need to be multiplying, right? You need to multiply here. Okay, so you're going to start, you're going to take the first event, E, whatever that probability is, okay? Now you need to multiply it by something, okay? Well, if what happens first, okay, is gonna affect what happens second, you have to assume when you go to compute the probability of F that event E occurs. Well, assuming event E occurs is that conditional probability. So it's multiplied by the probability of event F given that event E occurred. Okay. So it's going to seem confusing um, at first, okay? But I promise you, um, after you see me do <clears throat> uh, one example, I'm going to show you how to tackle this uh, example intuitively, and the formula will make, um, make a lot of sense. After you see like one or two examples, you'll be like, ah, piece of cake, I got this, okay? So does everybody have the formula down? Yep. And so here's the first example, okay? In the mathematics department, at WCC, there are 17 full-time faculty members. Okay, um, you know, like I'm a full-time faculty member. This is my full-time job. There's me and 16 others. I, th I think we're either the biggest or the second biggest department um, on campus. Does anybody have a guess who the other biggest department, other big department on campus is in terms of the number of faculty? 17, so there's 17 of us. And then there's probably a hundred adjunct faculty members in the math department, yeah, actually. Yeah, and then English. English is the other big department. Okay, they either have the, roughly the same number or one or two less or one or two more. Okay, so we're a big one. Okay, so here's the question. Suppose two faculty members are to be chosen or to be picked to attend a conference, okay? We'll say virtually, okay? All right, because there's no conferences meeting in person anymore. And I'm sorry, I have to backtrack a little bit. I have to give you a little bit of extra information about the faculty members on campus here. So within the math department, there are 10 female faculty members and there's seven male full-time faculty members. I'm sorry about that for not breaking that down for you, okay? Because we need that. 
okay? So suppose two faculty members, all right, they're just gonna be picked, and let me just say at random, okay, to attend a conference, okay? Suppose it's just a conference on educational math, you know, pedagogical methods and mathematics online or something like that, okay? So here's my first question. What's the probability both faculty members are female? So both the faculty members selected are female, okay? So we have to figure this out now. Has anybody got a, uh, I have no idea how to do this problem. Has anybody got a guess maybe how I would write it? Using some of the concepts I've talked about over the last two weeks. Yes, I, I, yes, I do know how to do this problem. Yes, I, I know. It's a joke that I always say. Guesses, no guesses. Uh, you're you're close, Tora. Yeah, you're close. Not exactly, but you're close. So what? So what? You have, obviously, you know, this this question is about the general multiplication rule for independent events. So there's going to be some type of multiplication. So let me show you how to write it, and then and then it'll, I think it'll make sense for the the next couple examples. So it's probably both are female. So it's probably the first person selected is female. And what does the second person need to be selected to be? Yeah. So now you just need to ask yourself this. Okay, I see the and statement, all right? So now you need to ask yourself, are these independent or uh, dependent events? What do we think, independent or dependent? Okay, what, why are they dependent? You're absolutely right in the chat. Like, why are they dependent events? Because when you remove like a female, it affects the number. Yeah, exactly, exactly. After you select the first female, you're gonna take that female, you're not gonna select them again, okay? So Tor actually has the, the answer uh, in the chat, but that's, that's exactly what happens. After you take the first female out, probably select another female, it's gonna change. So just so you can see, I'm, I'm gonna write out the formula and everything. So these are dependent events. So this is going to multiply. It's probably the first selected is female times. Now you just have to use this formula. When you go to compute the second part, you have to do the conditional probability. You have to compute the second, the second event given that the first event occurred. So it's times the probability the second selected is female given the first selected is female. Okay, great. And so like you can see in the chat there, um, which is like perfectly done. Um, uh, I'm just gonna kind of more walk through this in a little bit detail so you can understand how that answer got put there. Okay, so the probably the first person selected is a female. Well, how many total faculty members are there in the department full time? Yeah, and then how many of them are female faculty members? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now what I don't want to do um, is I don't want to get bogged down in the conditional probability uh, formula here. I just want to think this through intuitively, okay? When I go to select the first female, 
all right? If, I, if the first person I selected is a female, how many total faculty members are there now left to select from? After one female, yeah, thank you, yeah. So after the first female selected, there's only 16 total faculty left to choose from. And now how many total female faculty are there left to choose from? Yeah. Just like that. <clears throat> so this is 90. 17 times 16 gets you 272. And then 90 divided by 272. So it's the, like a 33% chance here. Okay. So even though the formula looked kind of crazy, is it actually maybe not that bad? You guys are not bad, not that bad. Okay. Let me ask, how about I ask, I got two more questions related to this, okay? Good, good. Let's do another one, okay? A little repetitive, but just to, to bring the um, concept home, okay? What's the probability both faculty members Selected are males. So you can, and just remember there were 10 female and seven males. Okay. So it's probably both are males. Okay. So just writing it out. I'm just going to write this one out, okay? Um, how would you write it using the methods I've talked about in class? So the first needs to be male, and, and, and then what? So, all right, I'll get this one. So it's probably the first is male. Yes, thank you. And the second is male. Yep. And then you guys got it in the chat there. Yeah, yeah. So you see the and statement. It's going to be the probably the first is male times the probability the second is a male given the first is a male. Um, what's the probability that the first person selected is a male? Yep. Thank you. So now you can see the pattern just going through how many males are left to select from after the first one and first male is selected. Yep. And then there's 16 total faculty. Perfect. Perfect. So this is uh, 42 divided by, I think it was 272. I did multiply. Uh, it's 15% chance there. So pretty low odds. All right, not, not too bad. All right, let me, um, okay, let me, let me give you a question, okay? 
So going, still going with this, this select two faculty members, okay? Remember there's 17 total, 10 female, seven male, okay? Two are selected. Here's the question. What's the probability one female and one male is selected? Okay, take two seconds on your own and uh, see if you can figure out what this answer is. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm just gonna give you a hint. Okay, I really hope you try this at home uh, at your desk or wherever you're you know, watching this lecture. Um, in all my years of teaching, almost everybody gets this question wrong. Okay, because this question's a little bit harder than it seems. Okay, so that's my, that's my hint. Okay, for you as you tackle this problem. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. Does it? I mean, does that's the that's right there in the chat is the question. Okay. You have to read the problem and, 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 and decipher that. Okay, give it a shot. I'm going to be quiet for a second. Well, I, yeah, you can make a guess. I, I'm not sure I know what the, what the answer is. So let me just give it two more, let me give it, uh, let me give it two more seconds. Um, and then I'm going to work the problem and talk about it. Okay. So don't, don't just post anything in chat just yet. Okay, so this, um, I ask this problem every year on, on, in, on, on the next exam. It's something like this. It's actually just a bag of marbles question instead of faculty members. Um, but um, do I specify, let me, let me ask this question. How many different ways could you select two faculty members and have one, one be female and one be male? Okay, what are the two different ways you could do it? That's the right answer. You can either select male to be first or female to yeah. be first. Yeah, so, the, so this, is, this is how this problem gets a little confusing with its wording. So it's the probability of one male and one female. Well, it turns out there's two ways you could do this, okay? You get the probability the first is male and the second is female. Or the other way you could do it 
as you could be, have the first is female and the second is male. See, see, see what I mean there? When, when I just say, ah, oh, one female and one male, just this doesn't mean the first is female and the second is male. You have to be very, very careful when you read it, okay? Does this, does this make sense then? I got one yes. Okay. All right, well, I got one yes. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. I got two yeses. Thank you. Um, what does the or statement imply? What mathematical operator in our class? So we know that the and statement implies multiplication, not divide, add. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so you're going to add the two. So it's probably the first is male. And second is female. Plus the probability of the first is female. And second is male. And these events are disjoint, so you don't need the minus. Uh, you just need an addition here. So now you can see that these are dependent events. So the probability of the first one is a male would be seven out of 17. Now what's the probability that the second one is a female then? Yeah. Yeah, there's 10 females, but now after I take a male faculty member out, there's only 16 male faculty members. Plus, now I go over here, the first is a female. Well, that would be 10 out of 17. Probability the second is a male. Well, there's seven male faculty members, but only 16 faculty to choose from. Well, seven times 10 is 70, over two, 72, plus, uh, 10 times seven gets you another 70 over 272, which is 140 over 272. Which gets you that point uh, five one roughly. Not too bad. I think you could not seeing me do this type of trick question here. I think you could handle something like this on the next exam. All right, I'll, I'll do one. Okay, yeah. If it's okay with everybody, keep, um, Let's, can we just take, I will do one more. Can we just take a quick break for two minutes? No. I actually just asked if we could take a quick break, but um, I don't think, I, you know, it's not a democracy, so. Um, what do you mean uh, do this for the, I, I'll, on the next exam, you will have a question that's like this one here. Yeah. All right. So let's say it's uh, 204, 205. Let's, let's, let's take, just take a five minute break. Let's start back up at 210. Okay. All right, so I'll be back in five minutes.
just to let you know in the chat, you can actually, um, if, if you, like, I know you saw you posted your phone number, but if you did want to send that for everyone to see, um, and then don't worry, the recordings of this don't show the chat, so you don't have to stress about that, but you can send private messages to people. Okay, um, you guys can, everybody can hear me okay? Oh shoot. We got one, yes. Okay, so just, uh, just a few notes real quick. Um, you know, I know this is hard stuff. It's not easy. It's also got to be hard. You know, uh, I'll, you know, I'll even turn my video on for this. You know, just so you guys can see me. I, I know it's got to be hard learning um, via Zoom. Do you guys find that Zoom is a lot harder than in the classroom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a lot harder. Uh, I, I get it. Trust me. I get it. You guys don't get the benefit of my amazing jokes in person. So I, I, I get that. Depends on the class. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure math is math is like, um, yeah, I'm glad the recordings help. Um, so I, I get that. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, so just a few things. Uh, I'm in my normal classes. Uh, when I teach them in person, I never build in a, an entire review day. So we didn't really get that before the last exam because I was trying to squeeze it in to stick on schedule. But for every exam going forward, you will have, um, and we'll do an entire, <clears throat> an entire review day, excuse me. <clears throat> and I'll also answer homework questions. So like, you know, if you try the homework early, and you ask me in class, like I'll literally load up your homework and say, oh yeah, you know, you can, you, you should solve it this way. Like make sure to lead you to get the right solution. So what I got, I got the impression from the last exam that most students did the homework like the night before or so. Um, you know, I had so many homework submissions after the exam. Like I wonder how many people just did the homework after the exam, which is not the way to do it. So, um, I'll help you prep with that review day. It'll make everything a little bit better. Okay. And then, you know, if the, at the end of the class, the cl class grades need to be curved, I can curve the class grades. It's not a big deal. Okay. Feel a little bit better. Okay. And I know Zoom stinks, uh, just, um, I know the college hasn't made an official announcement for next semester. Uh, so let me just answer, let me just make this announcement first. Um, I know the um, college hasn't made an official announcement for next semester, but we're being told the to plan to be remote again though. So, you know, unfortunately it is what it is. I don't know if, you know, if, if everything can change before January though, so, you know. Uh oh, I don't know if you guys can hear my my son in the background. He's about to go down for nap time, so he doesn't. He does not like nap time. Okay, it's like shucks. I'm gonna miss this putting this guy down for nap. <laughs> I, uh, they didn't say I couldn't say. Um, uh, as to go with their attendance policy, that's set individually by instructors. There's no uniform WCC policy on that. 
you know, like, I don't, I don't mind if you have to miss class. It doesn't bother me. I post the recordings. I get it. You know, it was a lot. Everyone has a lot going on these days. It's not a big deal. Okay. All right. How about I do one more tricky example, then we'll move on to some new topics. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that that's the professor's prerogative. I can't, I'm not gonna, yeah, uh, that's, let's not, we don't need that. You know, I appreciate, you know, I'm not going to comment. We should just not say that in the chat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I'm sorry you're having trouble with your professors. Okay. So would you guys, just out of curiosity, would you prefer, um, that I left on my um, video. Would you prefer that this more humanizes the second half of class? So you could see it from that? It doesn't bother me. You know, you just guys just get an up close view of my face. Sure. So we'll just see, you know, we'll try it. We'll try it. How about that? I can't promise that I'll put on the video every day. It just depends if I'm put together for the day, but okay. All right, let's try this one then. Here's another example. All right, and this is about uh, maybe a quality control example. All right, so suppose, um, oh, the poor guy, you guys can definitely hear him, right? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, it's the trouble of uh, working at home, you know? Sorry, I'm really, I apologize guys, there's nothing I can do though, you know? All right, so suppose Best Buy is getting a shipment of 10 PlayStations. Okay, the new, you know, I don't know if you guys, if there's any gamers in the class, but um, PlayStations has a new um, uh, PlayStation coming out in time for the holiday. PlayStation 5. Is that what it is, PlayStation? Yeah, pretty expensive. But the day my son was born, you know, I, I no longer had any free time, so I will not be buying it. Okay, so suppose they get this uh, shipment. Okay, let's just suppose, and suppose two of the two of them are working, or two of them are not working. Excuse me, and eight are working. Okay, so let's just say we know that, all right, ahead of time. Okay. Two are, two are not working and eight are working, okay? So imagine that this person works in quality control and you know, like what Best Buy does is they don't like, or any company, they get a shipment like this. What they're not gonna do is they're not gonna check all of them to see if they all work, right? That they're just not, they just don't have the manpower for that, okay? So a quality control specialist might take a sampling of it, okay? So suppose a worker, at Best Buy selects two, okay, at random for quality control testing. Basically what they wanna do is they wanna use this testing to see if their um, shipments are, you know, are working fine, okay? So here's the question, what's the probability This is a, this, this question like encompasses a whole range of topics. Okay. So what's the probability at least one is not working. Okay. All right. So the person's going to select two. All right. And we want to find the probability that at least one of the two is not working. Um, what's, what's a keyword here that tells like maybe how you want to tackle this? 
our keywords. Yeah, okay, so, so right there in the chat, the, whenever you see this at least, okay, right off the bat that tells you, hey, it's probably gonna be a complement rule, okay? So one minus the probability. So you have to figure out what is the complement of at least one not working, not working. I don't know. All right, so zero are not working. Yeah, okay. So um, if zero are not working, what does that mean they're both doing? They both do what? If zero are not working, that means they're both, look at my mouse, working. Yeah, yeah, so it's one minus the probability that zero are not working and if zero are not working, that means they're both working. Okay. So now you have to figure out a way to, to write that they're both working. So this is one minus the probability the first is working and the second is working. Now you have to ask yourself, are these independent or dependent events? I don't know. Aren't they independent? Let me ask this. Remember he's going to select two, right? Dependent. Yeah, yeah. If he's going to select two, if, after he selects the first one, right? Um, it's a pro and and it, let's just say the first one is working. Is that going to change the probability he selects another working one? Yeah, because there's just a limited number of them. So they're definitely dependent events. So it's one minus the probability the first um, is working times the probability the second is working. given the first is working. Okay, so how many uh, working PlayStations are there? Eight. Yeah, how many total? Total PlayStations, I mean. Eight PlayStations. Yeah. So the, probably the first is working is eight out of 10. Now, when you go to compute, the, probably the second one is working, right? You have to assume that the first one you selected is working. So now there's only seven working ones and nine PlayStations to pick from. So this ends up being one minus, you know, eight times seven is 56, 10 times nine is 90. So just changing the one to 90 over 90 minus 56 over 90. I think you end up getting um, 30, 34 out of 90. And that's your answer. So I know I took this one a little bit different direction. I made it a little bit harder with everything. Um, but yeah, even if I asked something like this on the exam, do you think you could handle it? Okay, so like, let me just, um, yeah, okay, I got it. I just want to do, I just want to do one new thing, but so like on your homework for this week, um, question number, Question number six um, is just like what I just did. So it's a chance to practice it, okay? You know, this is the question number six of getting, it's a, it's a bag of marbles question. Um, and so it's just instead of, it's selecting colored marbles instead of the faculty members. So it's just like what we did. Okay. And we're gonna get a lot of practice. Don't, don't worry, we will. 
Okay. Let's just, with the time we have left, uh, let's do, let's move into counting methods. Okay, so counting methods here, uh, we're gonna start today and we'll finish on Tuesday. Yep, yep, sorry about that, sorry. No problem. The homework is due the 15th. It's, it's posted in the classroom. It, it, if you, if you go check the due date and everything is all there. All right. Torah, you're okay if I go on? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So counting methods, we're going to finish. Uh, we're going to start today. We'll finish on Tuesday. Uh, and then we'll also start the next topic called discrete random variables on Tuesday as well. Okay, so um, first thing I want to talk about, there's different ways to, um, so when I say counting methods, it's going to, counting methods refer to the number of different ways you can make selections from a large number of, um, you know, out from a large number of options or a large number of items to select from, or it can, it's also going to be the number of ways you can arrange different objects. Um, so it's not going to be very simple, like just count one, two, three, four. It's, it's, it's not like that. So the first, so what I'm going to have over the next, this class, the time we have left in, in next class, I'm going to do one, two, three, four different counting methods. Um, and each one has little, Integrate um, little like uh, key concepts that tell you when to use them. All right. So let me give you uh, this example about the fundamental counting rule. Okay. And suppose we want to count how many. unique work outfits Matt has. Okay. So um, this is kind of like a, just a little bit of a funny joke, right? Um, you know, before the, before COVID hit, I would always, uh, yeah, there's no, yeah, my fashion sense has gone. Whoosh. Although my wife would probably say I never had any, but um, before COVID happened, I would always like I, I would always dress up for work. I, I don't know why. I just there's something I would do. Now now I have my video on today, but most of the time when I'm teaching, I just have like sweatshirt a sweatshirt and shorts on. So um, let's let's go pre-COVID days, and let me tell you about um, you know my my work wardrobe. Okay, just for fun. So Matt has. Okay, 10 work shirts, four pairs of work pants. Okay, and then I also have, you know, two pairs of work shoes, okay? All right, so what we wanna count is the number of unique outfits I have from, from this right here, okay? Um, so what you don't want to do when you have something like this for unique outfits, you don't just want to go, oh, well, 10 plus four plus two, 16, Matt has 16 different outfits. That's, that's not how it works. Okay. So to actually count the number of unique outfits, we have to use this thing called the fundamental counting rule. And the fundamental counting rule goes like this. If a sequence of n events in which the first 
option for the first event. Has n sub one possibilities. The second option or event has n sub two possibilities. The third option or event has n sub three possibilities. and so on. So there could be more than three things. Okay. So notice how this definition says the sequence of n events. So what I'm going to talk about is when I choose my work outfit. Um, it's a sequence of events, actually. Okay. So what I mean by that is the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning when I was going to work. I mean, I still go to work. It's now my home office. But when I go to work in the office. The first thing I do is I select my work shirts. Then the next thing I do is I would select the pair of pants I'm going to do, you, you're going to wear. Then the last thing I would do is I would select the work short, the work shoes I was going to wear. So then this, so this right here, this 10 is my n sub one number, the four is my n sub two number, and the two is my n sub three number. Okay. Then the total number of possibilities. of this sequence can be made in, so the total number of ways I could select my work outfit, basically. It's a very simple formula. You just take n sub one times n sub two times n sub three times, and you would keep going like that. All right, so for my example here, okay, how many work shirts did I say I had? Okay, how many pairs of work pants? Yep, and then how many shoes? Yep. So the total number of unique outfits I have, now this is assuming they all match, okay, is 10 times 4, which is 40 times 2. Matt has 80. 80 work outfits. All right. Does that kind of make a little sense? All right, you want to, uh, you want me to give you another one? We'll see, um, the, the another example usually helps kind of get this home. Okay. Right, this example is about um, guessing Matt's pin number. Okay, there's a there's a little story behind this. Um, the first um, vacation my wife and I ever went on together, uh, she was my girlfriend then, but. Um, we went to Mexico and it was awesome. And we stayed in one of those all inclusive places. And uh, one morning I woke up and um, my credit card was missing. Okay, actually my debit card. Uh, and I like freaked out. Okay, I said, Oh, my God, my cards missing. Um, you know, someone's gonna steal all my money. And my, and my girlfriend at the time was like, you know, well, first off, calm down, you don't even have that much money. So it's not that big a deal. Um, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a joke there. Okay. But anyway, she goes, you know, Matt, even if they have, it was a joke. She didn't actually say that. Okay. I, I always like to tell that joke. But she goes, um, and he goes, you know what, Matt, even if, even if someone had your debit card, you know, what, what, what's the probability they would even be able to guess your PIN number? Okay. So let's, let's calculate that. Okay. Let's, let's do that probability that I did in my head and see if it reassured me. Okay. 
Uh, just as a spoiler, the credit card just uh, fell under the bed, so we found it later. So it was, it was okay. Um, so Matt has, so this is true, I have a six digit pin. Okay, on my, on my credit card. And so when you make your pin number, here are, the, here are the options you can have. So the six digit pin, each digit, must be from the numbers zero through nine, okay? All right. Repeats are allowed. Okay, so in theory, I could have a, um, yep, uh, I'll get there, Tori, you're right. Yeah, uh, but I, I have a question for it though, okay, before we get to that. Um, repeats are allowed, um, and there's no other restrictions. So I could have the, uh, an acceptable pin could be the number one, 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 or one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it could be anything in there. So here's the question. Okay. So suppose someone gets my debit card and they take it and they stick it in the ATM machine. All right. With a single guess. What's the probability? you correctly guess my pin. That is incorrect, it's not, that is not my pin number, but good guess, good guess, good guess. All right, so here, here's what I'm doing. This is where it gets a little different, okay? I'm asking you a probability question now, okay? So it seems weird that we were talking about counting, but now I'm asking you a probability question. So what's the probability you guess correctly? All right, so I'm just gonna start this with the fundamental um, or the classical definition for probability, okay? So it's the number of ways, the, the numerator of the fraction, it's the number of ways to guess correctly with single guess. Yeah, you got it, Tora, but we'll get there. Okay, so what do I have to divide it by though? I have to divide it by the total number of possible what? Yeah. Okay, so first off, right here, the numerator, okay. Um, with a single guess, um, how many ways could you guess correctly with just one guess? So if you're just gonna get a single guess, uh, the number of ways you can guess correctly, yep, yeah, thank you. It's just one way, right? That maybe you guess that, hey, Matt, I think your pin is two, three, three, four, seven, eight. That's not my pin, don't worry, okay? But that's just my guess. So there's only one way that that can be correct, okay, that that is my pin. So now you have to count the total number of possible pins, okay? And to do that, that's the fundamental counting, counting rule here, all right? So if you look back here at the fundamental counting rule, if a sequence of events, okay? So the, the sequence of events I have to do is I have to pick the first number of the pin, the second number, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. So I have to pick, there's a, this, this sequence has six events, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I go to select the first digit, okay? How many, how many options are there for the first digit? Because it can be any number between, yep, zero and nine. Yeah, there's 10 digits between zero and nine. And then since repeats are allowed, the number of ways I could select the second digit is 10. And 10. And 10 for the fourth. And 10 for the fifth. 
and 10 for the sixth. So this is one over 10 to the sixth power, or the probability that it, with a single guess, just one guess, somebody guessed my, my pin correctly, is one in a million, okay? Make sense? All right, let's just do um, let's just do one more example of this and then we'll end class, okay? And this second example, oh, does anybody Everybody got this, that's okay for me to move on? Okay. All right, so the next, the last example I wanna do is, uh, th this is about names of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, okay? So stocks listed, on the New York Stock Exchange can have one, two, or three letter names. Okay, if they're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, like for example, uh, this is a company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, what company is this? Does anybody know? That's General Electric, right, GE. Um, you know, so the rules for, so the letters, the names of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange can be listed as having one, two, or three letters. So an acceptable stock could be called A, okay? Uh, repeats are allowed. So an acceptable stock company name could be BB, right? Or an, another acceptable stock name could be CCE. I don't know if that there's a stock name that, but these are all acceptable names, okay? So here's the question. How many possible names for stocks are there that could be listed on the New York Stock Exchange, okay? All right, does that question make sense? How many possible different names of stocks could there be for the New York Stock Exchange? Okay. Well, first off, how many letters are there in the English alphabet? Close, yeah. There's actually 26. Um, so um, the first thing you have to decide, okay, this is where it gets a little weird, um, is if you're gonna list a company on the New York Stock Exchange, the first thing you have to decide is how many letters you want in your name. So, so watch how I write this. The companies could be listed as one or two or three letters. Okay, so generally in this class, when you see the or statement, uh, what mathematical operator does that imply? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to figure out the number of ways you could, how many names have one letter, how many names have two letters, and how many names have three letters, okay? So don't overthink this. How many different companies could there be that have exactly one letter in their name? Yep, yep, there's only 26 letters. So there's only 26 companies 
that could have one letter name. That's it. So two companies can't have the same letter. Okay, that just can't happen. Okay, so now you have to figure out how many possible um, companies could have two letter names. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the thing. You have a task you need to complete. And this task consists of a sequence of events, okay? And it consists of two things, okay? The first thing you need to do is select the first letter, okay? How many different ways could you select the first letter? Well, 26, yeah. Now you need to select the second letter. So you're gonna multiply to count the total number of ways you can do this. So if repeats are allowed, how many possible ways could you select the second letter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can see, let's calculate the number of ways you can um, select three letters. So how many options do you have for the first letter? 26. And then how many do you have for the second letter? 26. And how many do you have for the third letter? 26. So the total number of ways would be 26 plus 26 squared plus 26 cubed. So 26 plus 20, 26 squared plus 26 cubed. Wow, there's 18,278 ways you could name a stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Which is a lot. I think there's like 2,000, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. And I, I could be wrong about that, but that's what I think. Okay, class today. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. Um,